Okay, so before I get into this one, just a quick uh, happy St. Patrick's Day. It's actually the early hours of the morning of the 18th now, but happy St. Patrick's Day. Anyway, any Irish viewers or anyone else who celebrated it, don't get too drunk. Um, yeah, I want to talk a little bit about the AUKUS uh, political summit in a somewhat unusual location, uh, San Diego. Um, not Washington DC, not Camp David, but San Diego. Apparently the reasoning for this was that it's near uh, an important American naval base and it's, uh, it's a big city of course on the coast of California on the Pacific side of things so that actually makes sense when you consider this was about the rise of China and Pacific uh, power really. Um, so AUKUS, Australia, the United States and the UK or Australia, the UK and the United States, um, this is uh, yet the latest grouping of nations to sort of be given some um, attention in recent years, um, not without controversy. I'm not talking about the Chinese side of things. Of course, China doesn't like it. China doesn't trust it. But um, some major Western countries that are not in this grouping, uh, France isn't in it. Uh, there's controversy there with France's uh, submarine deal with Australia. Um, Canada's not in it, notably. New Zealand isn't in it. So specifically the United States, the UK and Australia. Um, but I, I'm I'm in favour of any sort of alliance between like-minded Western nations, like-minded liberal democracies. Australia sometimes considers, it, considers itself an Asian nation, or certainly it's an Asia-Pacific nation. A uh, good photo here from the Times from the 14th of March. Can I hold this still? I uh, don't know how clear that was, but it shows um, Joe Biden, Centre Ground, uh, Rishi Sunak and Anthony Albanese on either side of him. So just a few things to say about this. Um, no doubt this is something that's going to come up in the future. And no doubt um, China is going to use it as a sort of um, we told you so type thing. Um, or rather, you know, they're going to keep using it as an excuse for their belligerence. But the whole point about this is it come out precise come about precisely because of China's belligerent. Um I think some time ago it was quite clear that China th th this philosophy, this guiding philosophy that a lot of Western leaders had, that as the Chinese economy grew, then somehow it would reform politically and become uh, more of an amicable partner. I think that was naive now. Um and I think the, the golden era that was sort of talked about during the Cameron Osborne period, um, in retrospect, was very wrong headed. Um, Boris Johnson's tenure uh, was mixed. Sometimes he spoke tough on China, sometimes he didn't. I mean, he was slow to act on Huawei. Um, during the campaign of the leadership, both Liz Truss and Richie Sunak spoke tough. Um, for all Liz Truss's faults, and she will always be remembered as a very weak Prime Minister, but she was right about China. That's one area that we can say Liz Truss got it right on. But she was in office for such a short time, it's hard to know how effective she would have been as Prime Minister in that regard. As Foreign Secretary, I think she was um, actually not a terrible Foreign Secretary, a better Foreign Secretary than Prime Minister. But anyway... Um, we will just go to quote a few. This is a long report, so I'm not going to read out the whole thing. It's by Oliver Wright, Geraldine Scott, and Stephen Swinford. Um, but I'm just going to paraphrase some some segments of this. Richie Sunak described Beijing as the number one threat, quote unquote, to Britain's interests during the Tory leadership campaign, but it's since softened his stance. He insisted that China was not on a predetermined course of conflict with the West, saying that engagement is sensible and responsible hope that Beijing would change course. However, he added, we can't be blind or naive to the challenge it poses. Well, expecting China to change course is a bit naive, and if Sunak goes soft, that would be a big problem. Now, so far, I don't think he is showing the sort of camera tendencies of overtly um, pandering to Beijing in the same way, uh, because I think that would be, a, it would be worse than naive, it would be bad policy. Um, and I don't think he could plead naivety. Um, you know, Sunak's a smart guy. I don't think he could plead naivety on that one. Um, 
China is increasing explicit in its aim to make the international order more favourable to its authoritarian system, it says. This is referring to the integrated review published a few years ago, which is very much looking at British foreign policy and how we approach uh, resurgent and assertive China. Um, so I'm just trying to hold still whilst I balance the laptop as well. Um, the, uh, in the comment, however, Conservative Hawks on China said the security review had confused them about the government's position. Um, Sir Ian Duncan Smith, the former Tory leader, said it is unclear whether ministers considered China a threat um, or an epoch-defining challenge. Jim Cleverly, the foreign secretary, said it was impossible to distill it down to just a simple set of words or a phrase, and the prime minister said something similar. He added, we cannot be blind to the increase in the aggressive military and economic behaviour of the Chinese Communist Party, including stoking tensions across the Taiwan Strait and attempts to strong-arm partners, most recently Lithuania. I mean, uh, the Lithuania example is a good one because there we saw China sticking its nose into, you know, the affairs of a small European country um, and basically dictating how things should go at a joint summit. The Lithuanians, to their credit, stood up to China and they sent a junior minister to basically say we're not going to be pushed around on this. Um, but, you know, if a small country like Lithuania can stand up to China, we have no excuse, really. Alicia Kearns, chairwoman of the Foreign Affairs Select Committee, said the threat of China cannot be seen primarily as an economic one, because to do that is to fail to recognise that they're trying to undermine our security and our sovereignty. Tobias Elwood, chairman of the Defence Select Committee, told Sky News that Russia and China would be breathing a sigh of relief that uh, more money had not been put into defence. The Labour MP Derek Quigg said, what we've got is a strategy that does not actually give any sort of signal or sound to Russia or China or Iran. That we're being serious about taking them on. Um, I'll say this for all the criticism I have of the Labour Party in terms of uh, its some of its domestic positions, I do trust Starmer on foreign policy a lot more than his predecessor, and I, I don't fear Starmer in number 10 in the same way as Corbyn in number 10. Um, Starmer has got it right on foreign policy and he's right to back the government when need be and push the government when need be. Um, but, you know, this isn't just about the government. Um, I think this AUKUS summit, like I said, it's come about. China's going to say it's belligerent. They're going, you know, they sarcastically said, are these submarines there for sightseeing? Because they're not carrying nuclear warheads. But, you know, for years, China has been making demands of respect, but showing little in return. Um, no doubt it's a very powerful country. It's the world's second biggest economy may well overtake the United States in coming generation. Um, who knows exactly when? Um, but even despite the protests last year against his rule, Xi Jinping just, uh, you know, secured a third term, um, he retains an iron grip on power. I think, I believe last year that those protests wouldn't lead to anything. And as much as I admire the courage of the protesters, um, I didn't want to jump and sort of say, oh, this is a sign that, you know, China is suddenly going to change because, you know, for any, for the Communist Party of China to reform, they need another really reformist leader. Xi Jinping is the exact opposite. He's an authoritarian tyrant. Um, so it's a bleak sign, unfortunately. Um, we may not be able to change things in China, and that may not even be the right policy. But what we can do is determine what path we take in this country and how we approach China. And, you know, it's not just about the government. Our universities, I think, um, have a lot to answer for because so many departments are taking money from China. So many university departments are entering into programs ostensibly on the surface looks harmless. You know, it's joint research and so on. But when you dig a bit deeper, uh, there's clear overlap with China's military apparatus. There's clear overlap there. Um, MI5 has been warning about it for a long time. Universities will bleat about academic freedom, but frankly, I think they're showing cardus. I think these university heads, these heads of department, they can't keep claiming, uh, oh, but we're doing everything within the law and, uh, you know, there's no threat. Are they completely stupid or are they lacking moral fibre or what? I think it's quite obvious that our universities are shamefully 
putting Chinese money ahead of, um, you know, of of Western values and of national security. Now, I get academics aren't in the business of, you know, it's not their protocol to, to look at national security, but I do think if you have a head of department is knowingly working with a Chinese colleague and that Chinese colleague has links to the PLA, um, you know, even if they're an academic themselves, when it comes to China, you absolutely can't be complacent. I think the Confucius Institute should be immediately shut down. That's called for that. I think we need to send out a message to Beijing. Um, and although it's quite small, far down the pecking order in terms of importance, I think one example of this is soft power because when we see Hong Kong students and others critical of the CCP, British students as well, being harassed and bullied and threatened by their Chinese peers, what does that indicate? It indicates that those Chinese peers think that they can behave whatever way they want in this country. This is not dog whistle politics. This, to me, is a sign of what Beijing is doing. They're stoking up nationalism abroad. I think we should say to Chinese students studying here, you know, um, you've paid a lot of money for this. Uh, you know, you you deserve to get the most from it, and hopefully you'll have a good time in this country. But they are not here to push the CCP's agenda or to push Chinese nationalism. And I think universities need to get much tougher on them, uh, you know, because there's been reports, indeed, I've personally interviewed someone who's involved in this, who himself was targeted. He's a Hong Konger. He was targeted by uh, Chinese nationalist uh, bullies. We need to send out a message. We're not going to tolerate this. One of the biggest problems we have in the West is that our very tolerance can be used against us by regimes like that in Beijing. Um, you know, they constantly lecture about the West um, being belligerent and not taking the right steps. And, you know, take, for example, the balloon situation. Uh, they claimed it was just a weather balloon that, balloon that was shot down over the United States last month. Um, not a word of apology, not uh, this is one big misunderstanding, just arrogant denialism. Um, and I think actually the American response was very, um, very refrained in context of what happened. If that had been the other way around, um, and I think the Biden administration could throw this at Beijing, if it had been the other way around, and an American balloon had been seen over China, they sure as hell would have shot it down. In fact, there's a precedent for this when the um, US plane was grounded on the island of Hainan back in, um, I think it was 2001 or, yeah, 2000. So, you know, basically Beijing cannot be trusted. Um, obviously, world leaders can't say this, but I, as a private citizen, I believe the CCP are the world's biggest liars. I mean, let's not forget what their role in COVID and their role in trying to cover up COVID, and they still won't take responsibility for it. This is something that infected the whole world economically, not to mention millions of lives lost, um, businesses destroyed, you, you know, a devastating, massive impact on the world. That comes down to the CCP and their lack of transparency. Um, I think they're biding their time with Taiwan. I think, you know, they're seeing what transpires in Ukraine. I think it may well be that they might support Russia and Ukraine after all, in the hope of, you know, looking at Russia for supporting them during any would-be invasion of Taiwan, because then Russia would be in debt to China. But fundamentally, I don't think we can trust Beijing. Um, by the same token, though, you can't just shut out the world's second biggest economy. So I don't propose that we simply cut off all ties to Beijing. What I do propose is we get a lot more assertive. Um, I would like to see actually a bit of reprisals in the language used. So, you know, when Beijing comes out with this so-called wolf warrior diplomacy, maybe we should fire it back a little bit, point out their hypocrisy. I'm not saying get into uh, playground politics between great powers, but I'm saying that when they insult us, we should insult them right back. I think, frankly, we're too tolerant and we're too passive. And it's not necessarily the government. Um, I think to an act better than some of his predecessors, but it's it's a lot of areas. Universities, definitely. I think the education secretary um, should threaten to withhold funding unless universities really, really get their act together and stop trying to, uh, to Beijing. I, I really think that is a serious problem. I think um, 
there's a lot of areas. Uh, last year, Christine Lee, and may have been actually 21, um, you know, she pertained to be a Birmingham businesswoman. It turned out she was basically a spy for Beijing. There was no follow up on that. I actually asked the foreign secretary at the time, Dominic Grab, through his like online podcast about that. And he gave a very politician's answer, you know, we can't comment on details because it's a fine, but it's strange that there was no follow up on that. You know, why was she not arrested? I think we should have arrested her and made an example of her to send out a message to Beijing that they can't have it both ways. They can't use Western citizens as pawns and expect that, you know, we won't look out for our national security. So it's strange to me that there was no follow up on that case. That she seemingly, even though she was confirmed to have been involved in espionage, wasn't arrested. She seemingly just left the country, possibly with sensitive information. I think Chinese nationals, I think there is a case to be made for, um, you know, checking security when it comes to issuing visas and so on. No, I'm not talking about collective punishment. I'm saying we just need to be more assertive with this. As opposed to, say, uh, granting a visa to a Norwegian citizen or an uh, Austrian citizen. You know, it, it's naive to say that just treat everyone the same, when clearly some parts of the world pose a greater threat than others. That's, it's not discrimination, it's common sense. Um, so yeah, I support AUKUS. Um, if China wants better relations, it's, you know, this these bully boy tactics that it employs, um, constantly making its arrogant demands, these nationalistic speeches, Xi Jinping and his cronies come out with um, time and time and time again, they show that they cannot be trusted. So I think we need to get tougher in language, not just action and policy, actually language. This might sound like a, a trivial point. I don't think it is. I think language matters. And I think whenever the CCP insults us, we should put right back at them. Um, you know, we should, when they make uh, speeches to the domestic audience that are riling up nationalism, we should use that against them. We should say, this is what you're doing. This is your Western phobia. Because they love to play the Sinophobia card. Um, yeah, I think we just need to get a lot tougher in that sense. Um, and as for those fools who say it's racism, um, no, it's not. Um, any more than standing up to Russia is anti-Russian bigotry. Put simply, Moscow, Beijing and Tehran cannot be trusted. They just can't. So we need to respond accordingly. For that reason, I absolutely support AUKUS.